That breaking news is out of PTI Airport in Greensboro. Yeah, firefighters say a vehicle carrying equipment caught on fire right in front of a terminal. Now two people are at the hospital with injuries. The fire is out, but police are still at the airport. So give yourself some extra time. If you are traveling tonight, firefighters say the people who were hurt were doing some repair work around the tarmac and were told that their injuries are extensive. The fire marshal is still at the airport investigating an exact cause of this. Stick with WXI 12 News to give you the very latest information on air and online. Tonight in 12 Investigates, we are learning new details about the criminal charges brought against a former worker with IFB Solutions, a Winston-Salem nonprofit. That man is accused of sexually abusing a 17-year-old with Down syndrome who also worked there. Our Steve King spent the day digging deeper into all of these allegations. He's now in studio with an outline of John Cardwell Jr.'s charges. Steve. Talitha Kenny, John Caldwell Jr. faces four counts of sex offenses stemming from incidents which allegedly happened in 2017. These court documents state that Caldwell Jr. inappropriately touched the 17-year-old boy who has Down syndrome on at least two separate occasions, and Caldwell Jr. knew that the boy had a mental disability. As 52-year-old John Dorsey Caldwell Jr., a former IFB Solutions employee who worked for the nonprofit for 12 years, awaits his October 31st court date, we now know more about the two counts of sexual battery and two counts of crimes against nature he's accused of. Court documents state that Caldwell Jr. touched a 17-year-old boy's private area on at least two occasions in late 2017 while knowing that the boy had a mental disability. A lawsuit filed on behalf of the alleged victim says he's a teenager with Down syndrome who worked at IFB Solutions as part of a school program. Attorneys representing the alleged victim say IFB Solutions knew what happened but did not tell the school system or the boy's parents. IFB Solutions representatives say they learned of the allegations in November of 2017, immediately suspended Caldwell Jr. and fired him four days later. A statement sent to us by the organization says, quote, we are disturbed by the allegations outlined in the lawsuit and are vigorously defending our actions. According to documents that the plaintiffs say were from IFB Solutions, Caldwell Jr. had engaged in, quote, sexually deviant behavior multiple times before at IFB. According to one of the documents, a supervisor wrote up Caldwell Jr. in 2008 for being seen by employees performing sexual acts on another employee in the bathroom and admitting to doing this. Another document states that Caldwell Jr. was seen in a bathroom stall with another employee in 2015 and denied the accusation. We went to Caldwell Jr.'s home to see if he had a comment. He was not home and later declined to talk to us. We have much more on the criminal and civil cases on our website, WXII12.com. There you'll also find our exclusive interview with the man who unknowingly told the alleged victim's parents about the abuse after assuming they had already known. We have his reaction and how he found out about this incident. Steve King, WXII12 News. Well, another thing that is on the minds of just about everybody, and not just here in North Carolina, is the weather. We're a couple of days into October, but boy, oh boy, a, a pumpkin-flavored anything just doesn't seem <laughs> right right now, does it? No, thank you. Give me some sweet tea for sure. <laughs> Our chief meteorologist, Lady Pope, has, says basically that we have hit record-breaking temperatures today, but Lainey, will all this heat continue? Yeah, you'll need sweet tea again tomorrow. We have got more heat in the forecast. Had a glass myself today because, yeah, it feels like summer, 94 the official high temperature out there today, shattering the old record from 1986 of 91 degrees. Now, usually we should be in the low to mid 70s this time of year. So yes, this is highly unusual. The temperatures have warmed since yesterday by some five to 10 degrees. Temperatures right now have come down just a touch since the afternoon highs, but still hot. 94 in Danville and Reedsville, 95 in Burlington, 93 in Asheboro, 90 degrees in North Wilkesboro. Heat indexes are in the low to mid 90s. They're not terribly high because the air is actually mixed out a little bit thanks to a west wind, so it's not terribly humid out there. That is one thing. Now we aren't the only ones experiencing this heat. You can see the temperatures well into the 90s, high 90s as a matter of fact in Nashville and Birmingham. So yes, that will be moving east and that will provide us with another hot day tomorrow. But this front will be bringing in some cool air and it's going to finally feel like fall on our seven day forecast. 
Thank you, Laney. Commitment 2020. Now Senator Bernie Sanders is suspending all of his campaign events until further notice. Yeah, doctors treated the Democratic presidential candidate for an artery blockage. A spokesperson says the senator is in good spirits but needs some rest. Recent polls show Senator Sanders in the top three among the Democratic hopefuls, along with former Vice President Joe Biden and current Senator Elizabeth Warren. They both tweeted their support to Sanders today. That's exactly right. Biden says anyone who knows what a force Biden or Sanders is knows that he will have a full and speedy recovery and be out on the campaign trail soon. That's from Biden. And Senator Warren also tweeting well wishes for a speedy recovery. Other 2020 Democratic candidates also tweeted their support for Bernie Sanders. And of course, you can find us online at WXII12.com or get the free WXII12 News mobile app. All details on the Senator's health and other commitment 2020 headlines. Senator Tom Tillis continues to stand by the president as Democrats continue their efforts to impeach him. And today, the junior senator from North Carolina, who's facing a primary challenge in about five months, spoke with reporters in Randolph County. Bill O'Neill is there and has our story tonight. This is our first chance to speak with the senator about the Ukraine incident, which led Congress to seek impeachment. The senator says Congress acted hastily and doesn't have the evidence needed to move forward with impeachment. I've read the whistleblower complaint, and I think it's irresponsible for them to move forward with a formal inquiry before they have those facts, because if that's all they have, I think this is going to end up, it's going to be another chapter in a saga of failed attempts just to reverse the election in 2016. How do you explain then the president's own words asking the president of another country to help him politically the outcome of an election in the United States? I think that you're reading far more into what I saw in the transcript, which I've read word for word, and the complaint I assume that you have as well. That alone has no, uh, th there's no factual basis whatsoever. Senator Tilly says Congress is ignoring other important issues while trying to force President Trump out of office. Quite honestly, I think people in North Carolina are sick of it. Do you believe then that the impeachment process is not even worth pursuing, that the Ukraine issue should not be investigated by Congress? Look, Congress, uh, the House has uh, perfect authority to do whatever they choose to do. The North Carolina Republican says Congress should consider investigating Joe Biden's involvement with the Ukraine and China. Tillis says if impeachment reaches the Senate, he will consider the evidence. They better get it right because the facts that they're operating on now are not sufficient to move forward with impeachment or articles of impeachment. But is the investigation worth pursuing at this time? Like I said, I'm going to leave that to the House. Senator Tilly says that the Democrats are moving forward on impeachment with insufficient evidence. He says he believes it's nothing more than another political effort to remove the president from office. In Ashboro, I'm Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. Thank you, Bill. A former Forsyth County Commissioner is accused of filing false tax returns. Everett Witherspoon Jr. was arrested today. A grand jury indicted Witherspoon last week on charges of filing false tax returns and failing to file a federal tax return at all. Prosecutors say he did not report his county commissioner wages between 2013 and 2015 and also underreported gross receipts from a business that he managed as well as his total income. If he is convicted, he could potentially serve several years behind bars. The former chairman of North Carolina's Republican Party pled guilty to lying to federal agents. Robin Hayes says that he lied to the FBI during an investigation of bribery allegations into a major political donor. Hayes, Durham businessman Greg Lindbergh and two of Lindbergh's associates were indicted in March, accused of trying to bribe North Carolina's insurance commissioner with campaign donations. As part of Hayes' plea deal, the conspiracy and bribery charges against him were dismissed, but he could still serve time in prison for lying. A former North Carolina NAACP leader says he never intentionally harassed anyone, but Reverend Curtis Gatewood says he now realizes his actions may have been received as sexual. An intern tells the Associated Press Gatewood's stares, comments, and touches made her so uncomfortable that she asked the NAACP and her parents for help. Last week, a former employee also accused Gatewood of sexually harassing her in 2017. The national NAACP has suspended his membership. Gatewood says he's deeply sorry, but denies committing any kind of sexual assault. No criminal charges have been filed.
Tonight, troopers continue to investigate a bus crash that sent 16 students to the hospital. So far, no charges have been filed. This is Sky 12 flying over the crash site in Stokesville, yes, Stokesdale, rather, yesterday afternoon. And you can see the bus flipped down an embankment there off to the left-hand side of your screen. Troopers say that a truck driver crossed over a median and hit a bus on Highway 68. Investigators say this was a private bus, not a school bus. It was carrying students from Huntsville elementary. Fortunately, everyone is okay. Doctors diagnosed two more cases of mumps at Elon University. That makes three confirmed cases at the university in the last few weeks. The vice president for student life says that he is working with the health department to identify and assess people who show possible symptoms. Mumps is a contagious disease caused by a virus. Four students at High Point University also tested positive for mumps last month. Health leaders say that mumps cases are more likely on college campuses because of close quarters there and contact with people from different locations. North Carolina's Attorney General Josh Stein is focusing on a new effort to fight scams targeting senior citizens. The AG spoke in Greensboro today with a Winston-Salem police detective and a fraud manager from AARP. He, Stein, says scammers often target older adults because of their trusting nature and the amount of money in their bank accounts. The Attorney General goes on to say that seniors are also less likely to report scams because in some instances they're too ashamed. One of the leading ways scams occur is through the telephone. And when you get these robocalls that they spoof the number so it looks like it's somebody else's, to a lot of us it's just an annoyance and that's bad enough. But this is how fraud happens. It's how it, so vulnerable communities lose millions of dollars every year to these scam artists. To protect the people of North Carolina. Last year, the State Department of Justice received more than 4,000 complaints about older adults being exploited by fraudsters.